Okay, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. And I hope that I can enlighten and give you some more insight. Um, the handout that I had presented, they may I may have some additional stuff since then, because like I said, I've done some revisions and I've gotten some more. I get some more links, but if you have any questions, I don't know how we usually do it. Do we do Q and A after? Um, any? I think, however, you're comfortable. Okay, I guess so. Um, uh, I will try to be as explicit as I possibly can. I have to do get my glasses on. I have to share my my screen. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully, you will see what I'm seeing. You see a slide presentation? No. Yeah, oh, yes. Now we do. Okay, now you should just see the slide, right? Correct. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yay. I practiced this last night. Huh. So, so uh, that picture obviously is not mine, but it's quite lovely. Um, it's on focus stacking and, and the types of editing software that we may be able to use. Uh, for focus stacking. And if you really don't know what focus stacking, it's really rather simple. But before we describe it, let's go what we need to know and what is covered. So we have to understand what depth of field is and uh, focus stacking, what it is and why we use it and what, what do we need to use it with, uh, DSLR, mirrorless or smartphone or any of those three. And then once you do your focus stacking, what do you do with it? It's not just taking a bunch of pictures. You need to know how to edit them in the um, post um, processing. And I know everybody has different post processing techniques and I've covered a few. Some, the most ones that I, the ones that I use for mine were Lightroom and Photoshop. <laughs> and I also uh, did um, some processing with um, Photoshop Express on the phone. Um, but there's other free software that I've, or lower price software than buying a subscription to Photoshop that we'll talk about later. So your, what is your depth of field? The depth of field is the distance between the nearest and furthest objects that are in sharp focus. And I'm sure most people know these basics, but I thought it'd be interesting to just review them. And it's determined by three factors. Your lens aperture, which is um, how wide open your lens is. You have a 1.4, which gives you a shallower depth of field, or F16, which will give you um, a wider depth of field. And um, I'll say, I'll talk a little bit more on the upcoming slides about the difference between, well, let me get my, hold on, my pointer on here. I don't know if anybody knows this, but if you right click on this, you can get that. You see, oh, you see my laser. Yeah, that cool? that's good. Or, or you can actually get a, a pen, so that's nice also. So it's just a right click. I pick laser pointer, and oh, I just unclicked it. Um, okay, so you can get f one point four, which is not everybody has a camera that'll go go to that level, the uh, shallower depth of field, or f sixteen, or even higher. Um, you're focal lens, whether or not you use a 20 millimeter or a 200 millimeter, and as well as the distance to the subject. So, next slide. Sandy, do you, do you want to explain what the difference between a 20 millimeter and I a will. 200 millimeter? I will. Oh, okay. I may, okay, if I don't explain it in the next few slides, pop up and ask me a question. Okay. Please. Actually, what I did was I did some revisions this afternoon, and this is not the one with the revisions, but I'm winging <laughs> it rather than go back. Um, okay, the aperture is like the pupil of your uh, um, of your uh, for your of your like your eye, but it's for the camera system. It opens and closes, and gives it gives a different amount of light that passes through it. And and I may have to let me see. Okay, and the size of the aperture, there are blades on the aperture. You can see these blades here, these white things, okay? And the opening is in the center. So with a, um, <clears throat> the blades will block the light. So more light is blocked at F16, okay? Whereas at F2.8, you have a lot wider aperture and more light will hit the lens. Okay, F4 is larger than F16. Okay, if you, I don't know if you understand that, but it's a fraction. F4 is equal to one fourth. 
F16 is 1 16th. So 1 over 4 is larger than 1 16th. So F over 4 will let in more light, which is here. You can see the opening. And um, it will also give you a narrow depth of field. So if you want to get a blurred background, which we'll show you later, that's what you would use. But F4, um, F4 is also faster than F16. And that's also because there's more light hitting your sensor. And F16 will give you a greater depth of field. Any questions? Okay, good. So on focal length, we'll talk about a bit of that. That is the optical distance measured in millimeter from the point where the light meets the lens sensor, not just the lens, but the sensor of your camera. And <clears throat> with an 18 millimeter lens, which is um, give you a wider view versus a narrower view, the 18 millimeter lens results in a photo with a wider angle of view and it gives you a perceived distance between the foreground and background that are more significant. So you're going to see more of your foreground, back and middle ground and background in, in focus or in, in with your depth of field with an 18 millimeter lens. When you zoom in with a 200 <laughs> millimeter lens, <clears throat> which means the 18 millimeter lens is, is wider. So if you have a very broad view, you want to see everything from left to right, you need like a wider angle of view. If you want to zoom in on a section of your view, you're going to use a, maybe a 200 millimeter lens, and you'll have a narrower angle of view, and that's a telephoto lens. And this also will compress the scene and minimizes your depth of field. That's one of the reasons why telephoto is not as great for depth of field. So, so just let me interrupt. So what you're saying is a wide angle lens gives you a, a deeper depth of field yes. and, a, and a long lens gives you a shallower depth of field. Correct. Mm. So in other words, it makes the... the it brings the object closer to you, but it's compressing it. So you're... Yes. you're right. Well, so it, so well, it minimizes well, the sense of depth or distance. That yes. Yes. Let, let's say I've got a... Uh, um, a flower. Okay. We're gonna, yeah. And Can we hold got, that question, Mario? Because we're going to sure. talk about flowers. Okay. No, no, I just I wanted to try. Right. To just, I wanted. All right. To so give me your thought. Story. Go ahead. Uh, let, Go ahead. I'm using flowers as an example, and I and I have a a, a wide angle lens. Uh, up up against that flower, or, or taking a shot at that flower. So you're saying that that would give me a depth of field, let's say, of one inch. Uh, I, I can't give sure you the equivalent. Right. And I if can't... I do a 200 millimeter lens and I have the same uh, format of the flower, the same view of the flower in my screen, although I'm going to be further away now, you're saying then that depth of field might be a half an inch. Well, the, the I can't give you that exact numbers, but there is, uh, I have some, it. yeah, I have some examples maybe that'll clarify okay. it. Okay. Before you get to it, let me just add that you also in conjunction with the aperture you're using. Yeah, yeah. Assuming it's right. the same aperture. Well, is it a, is it like F2 or F16? But we're getting into that more matters. detail. Can, can we... Yeah. That go well, on to the next slides and talk maybe a little ahead. bit later. Do I have a question, Sandy. Just two, mm -hmm. two questions. <laughs> it may sound pretty dumb, but how do we know if we have an 18 millimeter lens? Well, you have to look at you look look at your lens, and on your lens, you have some that are some people just have a kit lens, and they have like uh, 24 to 200, and some people have fixed lenses. I have I have a 20 millimeter. Lens. I have a 35 millimeter lens, and that's all it does. You cannot zoom in or zoom out. So you have look at your lenses and, and put it out on your counter and see what you have. And if you have any specific questions about your lenses, you can always email me and I'll answer you. So so actually what, what Diane is asking is the, the number of it's your on the lens. lens. Well, Hold on a second. 24 to uh, 70 would be yeah. on there. It means it covers the distance. It, it covers between 24 and 70. Yeah, this lens that I have here 
is my uh, 24 to 200. Okay, that tells me 24 to 200. So I can zoom in to, at 200 or I can wide angle it to 24 millimeters, this particular lens. So you look on your barrel of your lens and it'll tell you about this. But again, I wanted to bring in the idea of smartphones too, because I know a lot of people use smartphones. And <clears throat> I mean, without going into detail of every detail of every type of smartphone that there are, because there are differences and these are not necessarily, this, there are standards and then there are variations in all different types of phones. So smartphones have, with multiple cameras, have lenses with different focal lengths. Like I have the iPhone um, 14 Pro and I have three different lenses. Single camera smartphones have a wider angle lens most often, not written in stone. And then there are dual camera smartphones usually have a wide angle and a telephoto lens. So in this particular example, the F number, decreasing the F number or opening the aperture, say 1.4, will decrease your depth of field. Here we have, you can see the first three numbers in, in sharp focus and everything behind it is blurred. And everything here was taken um, <clears throat> at, with a 50 millimeter lens. Okay, this is not my photo. <laughs> Increasing the F number, okay, which has giving a smaller number such, such as F22 will increase your depth of field. So everything is in focus from near to far. See that, mm -hmm. right? Everything, yes. that makes sense? Right. And this is somewhere in the middle here because this is as, at F4.0. And again, these were created with a 50 millimeter lens. Okay, what is focus stacking? And we're gonna go back and forth and show photos. I have photos of some of these examples that Mario, you brought up. <clears throat> Simple basics process is taking several shots of the scene, focusing on each part. Okay, so this is focusing on the foreground. So you have everything in the foreground, which are sharp. This is focusing your camera is focusing, and this is either manual or we'll talk about cameras that have the built-in focus stacking ability in them. But if you manually focus on the trees, this is what you're going to see. Then you manually focus. Now, again, we'll talk about the criteria for getting these focus stacking images, but the middle ground is over here, but the, the foreground is blurred and the background is blurred. In the background, you're focusing on the trees all the way in the background, but everything else is blurred. So if you take all these three pictures and you focus stack them, and then you blend the images in a software program, you will achieve the images that are sharp focused from foreground, middle ground, and background to get this type of image. Mm. <clears throat> you can use any camera or smartphone. And here we need to recommend using a tripod and manual focus as opposed to auto focus. One caveat on this is, I'll, I'll repeat it again later, or, um, is if your camera, and there are certain cameras have what's called focus stacking mode manual in your camera, and I'll have, an, I'll have a slide that shows which cameras have it as far as most recent article that I read, <laughs> that some of them, you have to look at your camera's manual to see what you're supposed to use, manual or auto. And um, in my camera itself, I have to put it on autofocus rather than because the camera is doing the focusing. But if I was doing it, picture one, set it up, picture two, set it up, picture three, set it up. I want to be on manual focus and focus first on the foreground, then on the middle ground, and then on the background. Everybody got that? Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, thank you. So lens focal length and distance from the subjects is another factor, okay? How to decrease your depth of field and get sharp focus on your nearest item. You want a wide open lens, something like 1.4 to even F over four or F over seven. You wanna focus on the near subject using a macro lens or a zoom lens to get closer to your subject if you have a zoom lens and you really want to get in close to your subject. Not everybody has a macro lens. Or you get closer to your subject. 
How often is that possible? Not always possible if your flowers are behind a fence or you have bees moving around, you can't always get in that close. Or you have um, there's some other obstruction in your way. How do you increase your depth of field and get sharp focus from near to far? So in some cases you want your focus points to go, you wanna see the whole scene in focus. You wanna narrow your lens aperture, maybe at F9 to F16 or a larger number. <clears throat> you want widen your zoom lens or use a prime such as 20 millimeters. So in my case, if I'm using my walk around lens, I may go to my, um, my go to 24 as opposed to 200 to get more of the scene in focus. And again, I have some examples later. And you can also move away from your subject. Again, not always possible with landscapes, architecture, and even macro photography. How far can you walk, move back from a subject without falling off the cliff? So <laughs> <laughs> you want to consider all those factors. <laughs> can you get away without focus stacking? And the short answer is yes. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? This is this this is a tool put in your toolbox and something that may inspire you to grow as a photographer and learn something new. It's not something for everybody. And I say that in several slides, you may want to capture an entire scene in very sweeping landscapes. And I've seen a few, even my photograph that I um, entered, I actually had the same photograph in the jury, in the jury art show at the Monroe library. And then I had it in one of the most recent contests and I forgot the name of the judge, but he said, it looks, it looks flat. And yet somebody at the, at the art show said, oh, I feel like I'm, I'm all there. I see it. I see it, the distance, you know? So that scene may have been better off with some focus stacking. You can use a wider angle lens, lens and a narrow aperture. And I'll talk about the disadvantages of using a narrow aperture. <clears throat> Um, say you want to get a standard close-up as a, of a flower. Okay, you don't need to do focus stacking. You can move in closer and use your wider aperture at four, maybe even um, f two at one point two. There, are, there are problems with that, and I'll show issues with that. And what I read in the literature that most of the floral um, photographers use focus stacking for up to fifty images just for a flower because you get yeah. the sharpest image. And how many times have we heard the judge say, and I know it's in another slide, but I'll say it now anyway. Well, I like the center of the flower, but the petals look blurred. So, so Sandy, what you're saying is that a, a, a professional flower photographer right. could take as many as 50 images of the or same more. flower uh -huh. in the same position, each one mi minutely focused a little farther and farther and farther back. Absolutely. Wow. And I have some examples, not in my photos, but some that I found online. It's yeah. not only front to back, it's also side to side. Side to side, absolutely. And I have actually one like that. Oh, I can't see all my slide because I have people in the way. How do I get my people out of the way? Uh, Just minimize it down to one one uh, one person that you can see. That's what I did so you can see. So uh, speaker, put it on person that's you'll only see the person who's talking i don't that's me i don't want to see me uh <laughs> yeah there's a little a little oh wait i think i think this, i think i got something okay put okay. it up to the top and just click on yeah. the middle or the left button and you can do away with all the pictures yes uh well i can see you I, i'd rather see some of i can see my my pictures now okay so close up of this in, in up with single images okay so uh these are my examples of my flowers. And I took most of these next few images in my backyard before the gardener cut down my fall, my beautiful flowers in the fall because I hadn't come too early. But I was actually not studying focus stacking. I was uh, studying how to use different lenses to get similar types of scenes to see which camera I was going to take on a trip with me to um, Alaska. So I used um, the 35 millimeter uh, fixed lens and I had it at but 5.6, which is again on a, a wider aperture, which gives you a greater depth of field and some blurring in the background. And I had it at one 500th of a second and it was a windy day. So I did focus here on the front flower. 
and the wide aperture keeps the background blurred. And again, this is maybe what you want to achieve, right? In your, in your creation. In this one, I had my hundred, uh, this, this was probably on this, it was probably this, this lens and I had it at hundred millimeters at 5.6. And this was even faster. It was a different day, one 200, 2600th of a second. So in this particular case, I'm going to zoom in here, <coughs> and it's hard to see, I think, on, on, on a screen sometimes, but while some of the image may be sharp, right, you still see some blurring around the edges? Yes. yes. Right? Yes. Right? Okay. So perhaps um, focus stacking may have given greater depth of field, maybe using F16 as opposed to five or uh, F.8 or nine. And I'm gonna talk about the sweet spot of lenses versus using a, what that does in terms of um, clarity and in, in sharpness of your of your photo versus getting a depth of field. So Sammy, I'm gonna talk, what? Can I, can I enter? Can you go back to your full, uh, yeah. This might be a good place to ask again, the question that I was yeah. asking before, because yeah. in this example, the one on the left is a 35 millimeter wide angle lens. The one on the right is 105 millimeter, more of a telephoto lens. No, well, it's 100 millimeter. It was my zoom lens. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but longer than the one on the left. Right. You shot them both at f5.6. Mm -hmm. So my question is, is um, the only difference between these two the shutter speed doesn't matter, but the only difference between the two is the uh, 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 the the uh, millimeter, the length of the lens, right? So, millimeters of the lens. Yeah. So, which <laughs> one has a um, a deeper depth of field? Well, well, here let's let's just focus on this on this. You know, I could have gotten in closer too. Just to zoom in on this flower. Yeah, now that I think it's not it's not exactly the same because it would be right. if they were both the same composition. Right. I wasn't right. because I was doing them on different days right. for right. a different situation than actual. But but if even if I just by zooming in, you could see the difference. I think this does look a little sharper. So you think, yes. you think the wide angle had a bigger right. depth of field? Right. Well, what I what I read was your your um, zooming in compresses your image, and you're not going to get as great a depth of field. Okay. Okay. Uh, because sometimes when you're playing around the house and you're trying to do uh, close up shots, macro shots, especially like with plants, I often wonder: Am I better off trying to use a macro lens, come in wide angle, or am I better off using like setting my zoom to 200 <laughs> millimeters and getting way back. I think you're better off with the first one and also trying it and then trying your focus stacking and see which one you like best. In the well, house, it's easier focus. because in the house, it's easier because you don't have wind. And that's one of the factors. You'll see why you wouldn't do focus stacking. Okay. Uh, focus stacking. Oh, okay. So here's another close up. And here I, I believe I probably focused, again, it was not to do focus stacking at all. It was just to get a picture of my grandson feeding the squirrel. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and uh, I used a fast shutter because there was movement of the squirrel, right? Right. And I had one one hundredth of a second. I used F8 at 320 mil, mil, millimeters, which I had to do because I was further away from him. If I have, could have gotten closer, I didn't need to go the 320. I had my 100 to 400 zoom on at the time. Um, a narrow aperture could have given me a greater depth of field. Okay, it could have gone up to like maybe F11, 13, 14, even 16 to maybe get more of the, more of uh, everything in focus if I really wanted to, like even here, that's blurry, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the eye looks pretty good, but mm -hmm. again, it's not, everything is not in focus. Um, and again, talking about F16, some, most lenses have what's called a sweet spot. Anybody know, heard that expression before? Yes. yes. Okay, so mm -hmm. when you have a sweet spot, maybe it's somewhere in the middle of your lens, 
focal range, like F8 to F9, you'll get the best focus. You may not get the best depth of field. So what do you want to go for? The best depth of field or the most tack sharp focus? So these are questions to ask when you're doing a picture. And also, I wouldn't have done focus stacking here. Why? Movement. The squirrel is eating, right? Oh, right, yeah. Right? So it wouldn't have worked because any slight movement. <laughs> and I have some example, and at least one example of, of why focus stacking didn't work with the, with, with movement. And that I deliberately do as did as focus stacking. So here we got some close-up shots, again, done in my backyard from my backyard series, not because I wanted to talk about focus stacking. Do you want to do a, a photo where you focus on one item and you get everything else in, in bokeh and with the blurred effect, you know, in the background? And I know Dave does all these great Photoshop photo um, and he has these great backgrounds and hopefully we'll be able to pick his brain one day. <clears throat> but here I use F3.5. So it's going to really just focus on this flower. And even there, it wasn't as great as it could have been. I was, I have to say, pre-hip pre replacement, still limited by pain and sitting on a stool on the, on the grass to get this. And it was very windy. Mm. Mm. So I did 500, five thousandths of a second, 3.5. And this is my, my um, macro portrait fixed lens, 105. So you... It's it's a really nice lens, but it has its limitations. I use you it. could see how how the how it's just on the on the bud itself, the, the center right. one, how the, yeah. the sharpness falls off. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But you only the very front of it is sharp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here again, I used a different lens on it, probably on uh it's actually a different flower. But uh this was um my one hundred, this is probably this lens that I was using. One two hundred fifty or twenty five hundred seconds at seven point one, a little wider aperture. I even got the thorns in focus. But had I been doing this for, and I'll have to do this next summer because some the flowers are gone. Um, you know, see, and even that is blurred, right? Yes. So without, if I took this flower indoors, and took a picture of it indoors, I wouldn't have to worry about movement, and that would have been good for folks focus stacking if I wanted everything um, near to far. But if you want bokeh, that's a different thing. So you have to decide when are you going to use your focus stacking and when you're going to stand, go with your, your standard, you know, getting a sharp focus on your flower and everything else blurred in the background. But here- San Sandy? Yeah. What are you focusing on on the picture on the right? I probably was, you know, again, not having taken this uh, picture for this reason, probably somewhere around here, right? The red or the mm -hmm. green? Hold on. You were doing auto? Uh, I don't. Probably, probably manual. Okay. Um, where do you think I was? I, I This is blurred. Right. You were right? right just dead center. Yeah. Look, this is all... Tack sharp, adding yes. almost halfway up, and it's mm. all, that's all tack sharp. Everything else has got a little right. easy. Even look at the side, uh, whatever, when, when it falls away from the flower to let it open mm -hmm. on, on the second picture, that is tack sharp too. Wh yeah, where, which one? Here? On the second picture. Oh, this picture. Yes. Yeah, and the the, the one to the left uh, when you were zoomed in is, is really tack sharp. Uh, I have to find that zoom in thing here. Here. No, well, that's the uh, oh the other one. You're talking about the other one. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, where see you? that? Look at that. The front yeah. edge of right. that. Right. Yeah. Right. No, I'm talking about the one to the that goes to the left. Yeah, this one. My eye. Oh, here. This this that this leaf yes. here. Yeah, right here. Yeah, that absolutely, one, absolutely very good. Right. Absolutely. So again, this was 7.1. Had it been wider, I may have gotten more of this in focus. But again, there was a lot of movement that day. Stop moving. Sandy, uh, I think it would be the opposite. What? If you, shooting at 7.1, <laughs> you should have had a pretty decent depth of field on this. If you went down to uh, 1.2, that's where you would only get maybe where the green and red merge right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Tack sharp. If you went to F uh, 
16, mm -hmm. you might get everything sharper. Yes. But again, the focal point, the, the depth of the F16 may not have given me the most, the most, um, um, it would give me depth of field, but it may not have been as, as sharp throughout. Because uh, you're not using you're not using your your best um, your sweet spot, and I again question. Okay. You have a okay. Yeah. I do, but just my point is, if you're using something yeah. wide open, you have a very low, small depth of field. Using mm -hmm. a smaller f-stop will give you more depth of field. Right. Yes, like under F nine or twelve or fourteen. Well, even even seven one is uh, yeah more than moderate. Right. That's, that's getting there. Mm -hmm. And you're in the sweet spot range, which is usually right. yeah. F eight or thereabouts. Yeah. yeah. So here I we go think, with. I open. think those are two different things. You know, the, the, there's a depth of field range, and then like when you talk about the sweet spot, it's. Mm -hmm. is what what does the lens do with that depth of field but the depth of field stays the same yes but it may not be it may as not, deep, greater focus right. in all it right throughout the depth of field okay so here i was in a scene in colorado i didn't have a tripod it was a handheld uh, my lens that i was using was um i hmm, what was i using here um, I would probably say then I was using <laughs> the camera again. I used F13 and I believe I was focused in the middle ground. So we're <laughs> here. Um, a lot of one of the things in in talking about you whether or not to use uh, focus stacking would be this this scene would have been good uh, because there's a lot to want to have focused in on really sharp here and ev not everything is sharp. And even back here, not everything is sharp. So maybe again, going up F16, um, the 39 millimeter gives me the wider angle of view because I mm -hmm. wanted all I wanted all this here in focus. Mm -hmm. And but I I do see that here, right, blurry. Mm. And and one of the things I talk about is going up to F16 that there's a lot of light um, aberration. There's a light uh, light bending at F16, and they may have to do more cropping um, with F16s. So there are options that could have been um, used on this that I didn't use because I wasn't then doing it. Well, you know, you recognize this scene. Hinesboro Preserve. Yes. Um, I did this in the fall. Um, again, not doing my, I hadn't learned about, I just found out about um, using focus stacking by chance. Um, this was a wider angle, 20 millimeter lens at F11. And uh, I was as close to the water that here that I could have. I believe I focused on the foreground, but again, I see some middle ground um, blurring. Uh, zoom in. In here, right? Agree? Yes, yes. And, right, and then this is definitely a single image. Okay, so whether or not, and in this particular case, could I have taken a tripod? It wasn't a long walk. Yes, I could have taken a tripod. Today, I wouldn't have taken a tripod because I can't even hold the camera and walk at the same time and focus with my right eye. So <laughs> I'm not doing any camera take photography right now, but then I probably could have. Um, and uh, I think maybe I would have gotten, um, and also the white angle gives me that better, um, depth of field throughout. If I had focused in centered here, say I'd just done, um, you know, a zoom into this section, you know, it may have compressed the image more and it may not have given such a great shot. I mean, not that it wouldn't have been great, but it may not have been the best shot. Any questions? Okay, when should you photo stack your images? When your depth of field won't be deep enough, only parts of the shot shot will be sharp. Shot will be sharp. Say that three times fast. <laughs> uh, very deep landscape scene. Some parts of the scene may be too close to the camera. Um, your zoom lenses for landscape can cause some blurriness in all but the distant landscape, even at f sixteen. 
and ultra close up macros. So um, these are some of the times that to use it and in deep building interiors. Um, if possible, you could back up, move closer, use a wider lens if feasible, or say you don't have a, a, um, a zoom or you, you know, you don't have, you're not switching your lenses. I know a lot of people don't like to switch mm. lenses. I don't in the middle mm. of a walk and mm. I'm not carrying two cameras on my other, either arm, which some people do. Um, but you could use a wider lens. Um, you could use a F16, a narrower aperture or even larger, my camera goes up to like F35. And, you know, I, my camera's pretty good. I have the Z672, but again, how much optical problems I'm gonna get from light diffraction. That's what I was thinking about before. And in my links and my notes that you I sent out, there are some information about what diffraction is and it has to do with the bending of light at different angles. Anybody have any questions on that? Because it is a subject that I'm not equipped to talk about that much on light diffraction because it's outside the this. So, so when Andy, I do have a so the yes. focus stacking is done on the computer. We're going to take talk about it again, but I'll what I'm going to say is this: you take multiple focus uh, photos of a scene first. That's the first step, which is what we're going to talk about. You have to start with taking of the same exact scene, of the same exact spot, without moving your camera, why a tripod is recommended, or having a super steady hand and um, having a um, vibration control on your camera and your lens to do it <clears throat> hand, handheld, okay? But that's, that's the criteria. But you take multiple images and then you have to combine them post, post in, in the camera, okay? Okay. You want to get the most detail in the in your as your camera can get in a single focus. Um, you're going to use that when you want to enlarge your prints. So you take that scene and you want to enlarge it. What happens when that scene is enlarged? Is it going to be blurry? Okay. If there's going to be a lot of cropping post processing, you want to be have the most tack sharp and depth of field as possible from taking the photo. Um, the landscapes with the largest depth of field that I could see is so many people have taken photos of, of distance mountains, you know, your close up mountain, your distant middle ground mountains, your distant mountains, and you want to get all that depth that you see when you're standing on the mountaintop, you know, and saying, oh my God, look how, look how amazing that is. Um, and also from your macro image and just thinking about what the judges have said about flowers. The center of your flower is great, but your petals are all blurry, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, and again, the same repeating again about having that sweet spot for best focus. So using an F16 may not give you the best results. You'll get a greater depth of field, but it may not all be as sharp as, is, as if you were doing focus stacking. And somewhere between F4 and F8 is when you get possibly the best focus. And again, you would have to look up your camera, your lens, and see what that folk, uh, that um, sweet sweet spot is. And the best thing to do is know your camera, because I had no idea that I had focus stacking in my camera until I, I you know, I tap, I just clicked on something on YouTube. And I, <laughs> these spots mean nothing. I don't know what they are, and I didn't want to get rid of them. So, when not mm -hmm. to use it, uh, wildlife. Okay, landscapes without close foreground objects. You want to use a wider angle and F16 to get the sharp image sharp enough. But you, if you don't have anything in the foreground that you need to focus on, you don't need to use focus stacking. Waves, obviously, for movement. Wind, not great for focus, can't do that. And street scenes. Um, street photographers do not use focus stacking for obvious reason. This would have been nice to get the boy, the woman, and all these people in the background, but I would have had to have them stand still. And I don't think they would appreciate that while I was taking the photo. <laughs> Birds, bees, and so these are the times you're not gonna do any focus stacking. So the only thing that's left is landscape. And macro. Oh, well, ma and anything that's macro. Or anything that's stationary. Look, all the photos that we, I'm gonna show some examples of what I did in the house too. Okay. Um, your, your alternative alternate to um, 
focus stacking, you want one photo with a shallow depth of field with a blurred background, which may be what you want. Your bokeh is your, is your reason why you're taking this picture. You really want a focus flower and everything in, in the background blurred. You don't need focus stacking. <clears throat> Say you want to get a picture of a bird, but really focus in on the eye, but you don't want to concentrate on the whole rest of the bird. Okay, you're not going to get a bird moving with focus stacking. And many birds are not sitting still for the camera. Uh, for a flower, if you focus on the center and you want the petals to be blurred, maybe what you want. But think about if it, I, you know, if that's what you want and want to do, you don't have to think about what the judge wants. This is your artistic idea. You don't need to focus that. Some of the cameras that have built in um, modes for allowing you to take the number of shots. What this means is I have, I have the Z7 II and I can set the number of photos I want for that focus stack, how the space, the distance, the time from photo, uh, photo, shot, photo one to photo 50 or 100, how, how long a time before the next shot is shot. And um, the, well, there's three things that it, it does, but the camera has it built in. And these are some of the cameras that actually I looked up and they I didn't look it up, it was on, on an article. They say that these have focus stacking. So anybody have the, any of these cameras? No. <laughs> Sandy, when, you, when you do it with your Z camera, does yeah. it, does it uh, it's like, you know, uh, multiple shots, I, I take it, but does it, does it change the focus for you? Yes, yes. You can, it, oh, focus, well, this neat. is what I was going to say. What happens is you set it, you have to start it, and then you have it on the tripod and they actually tell you, well, if you're doing it manually to use a uh, remote, so you're not shaking the camera. You want the as little sh camera shake as possible, right? Mm -hmm. So, but this will, doesn't start it right away. There's like a hesitant. So once you hit the shutter button, it'll, you'll hear the click, 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 click. And I think I can go up to over a hundred if I want. Mm -hmm. I think I forgot what it sets it at and for wow. time intervals. Mm -hmm. Right. But what and is it? What is it changing? It's changing I your focal. Your fo this It's changing your focus from near to far. You start okay. with your focus point on your nearest item and then it will change it to infinity okay. and it'll stop at infinity if you set it for 100 and infinity is at 75 the camera will stop at 75. it won't take pictures beyond that so it's not changing the aperture but, the, but no the it's not point. It, right just the focal point everything is the same you don't change the lighting and the main thing about doing it when we do it manually i'll say is you take Everything the same. You don't change anything except your focal point when you do it manually. You take the, the problem with that is, is you're going to have to be adjusting the manual focus ring, and there's always a chance you're going to be just slightly moving the camera. Right. With with the automatic, with my camera, I have to put it on. It won't work unless it's on autofocus. Okay? Because they has to be, you know, in order for it to get the picture. But when you're doing it, Manually taking one picture, then the next picture, the next picture. It's better to do your manual so you're not your lens isn't going all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it with any camera without the built-in focus stack mode. Okay, so you don't need that camera to do it. You take several shots of a scene, focusing on the part that you want to be in focus. You can use a smartphone. Okay. Um, recommend no matter what a tripod and manual focus as opposed to the um, autofocus, which is what I said before. And then the post processing will talk about blending images to achieve sharp focus in the foreground, middle ground, and background. And your middle ground could be several different middle grounds. It's not just one middle ground. It depends on what scene you're taking, how how many photos you want to take. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. I did some sitting on my recliner when I, my hip was really bothering me before surgery. And here, I should go back. Well, anyway, focus was on the bird in the foreground here. And zoom. And I did have my uh, cam. I was using my, my, my Z7 II, uh, 24, I think this was a 24 to 200 lens on a tripod. Okay. And was it the best scene? I could say no, because the 
what I'm taking a picture of, I'll show you, zoom in, is the frog is kind of dark here, right? I was focusing on the bird. Uh, here, I'm focusing somewhere probably around here. And then, and then this is still in the middle ground. And then I focus more on the frog. Okay, wow. and this is a um, porcelain floor right here. Let me. You want you want this? You see the frog here? No. Zoom. Hold on. Zoom. <laughs> this is the frog right here. I said it's not the best because he's oh, on a dark. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Nice you see my little frog? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. I have some more, <laughs> and I used um, twenty-eight millimeter f nine. And I cropped it to uh, one point for the, I made the images at 1.1 1 .1 afterwards. I cropped them after, you know, to get this 1.1 image. And I have some other examples here. I focus stack the soft, so these are software, they're not free. I did the, those two pictures. I first took them on my Nikon and I, I focus stacked it and we'll, I'll show you some steps in Photoshop, um, I Photoshop. I did this in Photoshop to get the three images focus um, here. So I think the frog looks better than it did before. Yeah. Right, and the yeah. bird too. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. yeah. I'll talk about the editing of other things after a little bit, a little bit later. But um, here, this was done in Lightroom, and I the Lightroom stacking isn't really stacking it's a more of a merging and it's not quite as good as because you can see this not as sharp the same yeah. photos right yeah, the, the birds much more in focus on the left right so oh yeah because yeah because lightroom itself doesn't do the same thing and i'll show you the steps in photoshop now i use photoshop express which is an um, app on your phone I can use, I think it's on iOS and Android. It's free. It has nothing to do with Adobe Photoshop. Oh. Okay, it's Photoshop Express. And I use the Nikon photo. <laughs> I imported them to my phone, but I had to, <laughs> when I imported them to my phone, which are my, I take my pictures in raw and large sizes, I had to make them JPEG smaller sizes. So already I'm reducing the um the resolution correct mm -hmm. um, right um and not as sharp as when the same photos were uploaded to the computer in raw and edited in photoshop so here let me get it human i it you know mm -hmm. it's, is it better than just doing one photo i probably not right in this particular situation mm -hmm. but photoshop what this i didn't in this one night I was up at one of my 3.30 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning, I didn't wasn't sleeping. I said, oh, I never took photos of my, you know, take pictures through a screenshot and then put them in slides. So if anybody wants the Photoshop, how to do it, they can email me and I'll send them how to do it with photos. I just didn't do it for the slide presentation. So I apologize. Because um, I try to get this done before my uh, hip surgery. Okay, so here are some iPhone photos taken with the iPhone and then um, edited in Adobe Photoshop Express. Here I focused in more, again, not the best image. Zoom. I was supposedly focusing here, but I that was before so my laser. Can, can I just ask? Uh, yeah. Uh, Photoshop Express is, Adobe Photoshop Express is just something free, available. On an, yeah. Apple, on an Apple yeah. phone? Okay. Yeah. On any, I, or Android. I, you can get it on Android, too. I looked yes. it up. So I have it, yes. So you're doing it on your cell phone. Okay. Right. So you did, excuse me, you did editing with Photo Express? Photoshop Express on my phone. I took <laughs> the pictures on my phone on this one, and then I edited on my phone on this one. In Photo Express. Photoshop Express. And you can't get the Photoshop Express on your computer. Yes. Yes, you can. You can. I think you can. No, it's only no. for uh, no, oh. only for your phone. 
I think I I'm not sure. Uh, I, I I think I read somewhere that you can get the app on your computer. Did you happen to notice anything that was free that yeah. you put on Look, your computer? We're gonna go into that in a few more slides. Yeah. So here I focused on on the um on the middle. Right? Mm -hmm. And And here, I believe I focused on the distance. Wrong. Yeah, I see. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And one thing when you're taking multiple images, um, what and I sometimes, I, most of the time I forget. So before you take your first image, so you know where you start, put, take a picture with your hand in front of it. So that's the start. Your, that's your first image, but you're not going to use that. So the next three to five images before your next hand shot are the images you want to work with. Because you may mm -hmm. want to do this five shots or you, next time you want to do three shots and you're doing it on your camera or your phone, you want to know where you started from and where you ended from. Does that make sense? Yes. It, yes. Okay. okay. Um, I used a tripod. This was, the, this is, was a photos on the iPhone and what the, the, um, the information that I, when you press, when you take your photo, you can press the letter I on your phone and it tells you what the, what the actual um, EXIF, it tells you what it was, 47 millimeters, 1.5 and 100, 140th of a second on the, on the phone, on my iPhone. I could do that. Hmm. Did you know that you could do that? If you no. look at it, if you look at your image on a phone, yes. does everybody know that? There's a little um, eye on the, my picture is up and on the bottom of the screen, there's an eye and it tells you what the mm -hmm. size of your image, um, how many millimeters, what your f-stop is, but that's on my iPhone 14. So yes, sure. on, the, on the Android, you have to click on details, which is right, uh, you can get to that easily and it tells okay. you all of that. Okay. Um, and again, I don't have, pictures of how I did this, you know, the actual screenshot. So if anybody's interested, I will be more than willing to, I, I actually took some of the screenshots. I just didn't have time um, to put them into the slide presentation. So if you're interested, just tell, let me know, email me and I'll send them to you. Hmm. Well, Sandy, even if you can't show it back up there a sec, for those who have never done this, or especially yeah. on an iPhone, so you took your three pictures. Yeah. What do you What do you do next? You Even if it, you can't show it, can explain. Oh yeah. It. Well, okay, sure. I'll go into Photoshop. Uh, the The first thing is you get into you go to the app, uh, which is let me find it on my phone. Photoshop Express. I open it up. Resume session. No. Okay. There are things on when you open up the app. On the top, it says edit photo, face retouch, combine photos, collage, capture. So I go to, I have had the photos on my phone now, right? They're already there. Then I go to combine photos, and then I select photo number one. Then I, and then there'll be a little screen, and then you can plus it. Photo number two, then you plus it. Photo number three, you plus it. And then it, you merge them down. And then you get one image, and then you could then you could edit them afterwards for lighting, ex, you know, for your exposure and everything else in Photoshop Express. But those are the steps basically that you take. But it's not the same, and, and I'll explain it when we get to Photoshop. Um, the steps in Photoshop, what what Photoshop Express doesn't do that Photoshop does do. Rich, is okay. that good? Yes, very good. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so, okay, this is Photoshop Express on the iPhone and Photoshop, I mean, Photoshop Express on the iPhone and the same photos, Photoshop on the PC. So I took iPhone photos, took the same iPhone photos that I took here and I put them in Photoshop Express and I put them onto my Photoshop on the PC. But again, it's a JPEG. It's not, you know, your camera picture is not going to be as large as a war picture. So I don't think it made too, it, I see a little bit better here by the eye. Yes. Right? Yes, definitely. Let me go, let me go here. Here's the foreground. 
These are the ones that are already merged or put together. This is not really a merge. Remember, it's just the flattening of the three Im the images. It doesn't correct alignment. It doesn't correct for, oh, this is more in focus and this is more in focus and this is more in focus and we'll put them together. It just merges them. Where in Photoshop Express, it'll pick the most tack sharp of all the sections and put them together. So this does look a little bit better. This yeah. one yeah. looks a little bit better than this one. Right? Yes. Okay. Not much. Well, mm. not much. Just in the oh, middle ground. Yes. From the, I think here, I think the eye was better. This wasn't really any better here, but that could be the way I took the photo too. I may have been too close oh. to the camera. I was sitting on the chair right in front of the table. Right. So right, right. Well, that no, the one on the right is noticeably sharper. Yeah, uh, the, yeah. The center yeah. bird and even the background eye, uh, item. That right. the frog is sharper. Yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. And I did do some post stacking or whatever, uh, uh, you know, image it, you know, uh, uh, lighting and, and exposure and um, sharpness, um, you know, um, uh, editing afterwards. Because you could do that once they're stacked together. Uh, step by step. Um, Okay, set up your shot like normal. This is when you want a photo stack, say, for landscapes, okay? And it really is the same process for your flowers. This is when you're doing it without the camera doing it for you. Use a tripod uh, for the most accurate results. And and you work um, in post-processing. When you, when you do this, when you're on a tripod, you, does everybody know to turn off your vibration reduction if your camera and your or your lens have vibration reduction? Does everybody know that? No. You know, I used to know that, but... <laughs> I forget I it most of the time. I, I said, oh, I didn't do that. No, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure why, but they're supposed to return, turn off your... Does anybody answer why you turn yes. off your... Okay, yes. go ahead. Because why? having no motion, your camera will invent motion. Ah. And it will knock it off. But that that philosophy's changed now with newer cameras. Um, oh. Newer, I don't know how new or which of the newest models, but the newer ones, you don't have to turn it off. You can leave it on. Oh, okay. But it is, it is still, if you're on a tripod, it's still a good idea to turn it off. Okay. Give yeah, yourself yes. a better shot at it. But Rich, the bigger problem is remember remembering to, to put it, it back on. on. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Setting it to manual mode, so you're doing everything manually. Dial in and keep the same exact exposure. Don't change your exposure from shot one to shot three or one to shot 50. The same exact exposure because you're mm -hmm. going to do your editing. You could do your editing before you stack them or after you stack them. And I thought I, I, I only show focusing uh, editing after because I didn't realize you could actually do it before. So a few more steps, but um, you want to set your lens to manual if it's available on your on your lens. Depends on your lens. On my this lens, I don't have a, a place for auto or manual. But some of my other lenses, you can actually change it to autofocus or manual focus on your on your lens itself. But if any case, check your camera to know how to change it in camera. Go to um, manual mode instead of auto mode. Um, focus on the near object closest to the lens and take an image. Adjust the focus to be further away. Again, that all depends on your image, what you want to achieve, how deep is the image, and how many shots you're planning to take. And you repeat as many steps as you can to get the images sharp from, from the front to the back. Okay, it could be what I what I gathered from the literature is they actually do more in the in the macro than in the landscaping. You can get away with less in the landscaping unless it's a really detailed landscape. Mm -hmm. Okay, here is a very lovely image which was not mine. With <laughs> 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 done with fifty shots, a tripod, <laughs> right? Wow. Uh, use of a tripod. I think I think the judge would like this. What do you think? Yes. This is um, vibration reduction features off. Um, fully charged battery, obviously, because you're going to be using a lot more battery power. Uh, a self timer 
is re recommended. If you have, you have a camera, you can set it to start taking a picture in five seconds or 10 seconds. So you don't have the sh camera shake of the, you know, pushing the, the shutter lens because that will can set off a slight amount. Uh, make sure you, you have a good sensor clean, clean, cleaning. Make sure your lens, your sensor is not dirty. I took a whole bunch of photos in, Flor in California, um, no, Colorado, of blue sky and didn't realize till I was home that I had a lot of spots on my on my blue sky because my sensor was dirty. And I found a very simple way of cleaning it. And my California skies were a lot better than my Colorado skies. Hmm. So you want your, yeah, you want your sense because you're going to take so many photos and it's going to show up. And um, make sure you have, it says use a slider mount on a tripod that's more advanced. And I'm not planning to go there, but if you have a, a tripod that has a slider, you can move your, your camera forward and back. <clears throat> okay, here, look at this one. Rich, you, you posted a really nice clock face on, wasn't your, was it your picture in the, um, in the, in the Stonebridge exchange? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was very good. Um, I like the that picture. A lot. The picture was a lot better than what came out in the magazine. Well, of course, they know. <laughs> that's usually the case. Right. Uh -huh. But did you take fifty images? No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't. Okay. Well, they used an eighteen to fifty-five millimeter lens, and this this was stacked. And I'm going to talk about Helicon in, in forward in the next one. Is a type of software, very low fee. And, but I'm going to give a slide on this. It's another uh, focus, another software that does focus stacking. But look how great this shot is, isn't it? Yeah, really sharp. All right, so are you confused? <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do I do now that I have all these photos? Okay, these are things that are not free. Okay, Adobe, Adobe Photoshop, which is what I've used mostly, it, Auto blends the layers. There's a monthly fee. I think it's nine ninety nine a month. It's in the yes. cloud and has many other features that you can use. Lightroom usually when you get Photoshop, you also get Lightroom. You get a plan, um, so you're not paying extra. You, it's usually com combined in a plan. Um, Helicon is the one I mentioned. Um, I didn't. I didn't download it. I didn't try it. I just read the reviews. Um, it's a very low fee. I'll have a picture on that um, and has other different uh, rendering methods. And I read another article subsequent when I put this together that also talked about GIMP, um, which is free image manipulation and editing and Zareen, which has a 30 day free trial. And, but the fees weren't so bad. And the trial, the, these three, Helicon, GIMP and Zareen all were rated well in the article that I read, read for photo stacking. Actually, I think Serene said it was like on top or Helicon is actually, a, um, if you're interested, it's from Ukraine and they still are, the things that they sell aren't being sold because they're not manufacturing, but this, as far as I know, the software is still being, is still viable. And <clears throat> there, are other, there are other processing, um, photo processing thing. I'm not gonna talk about these others. They're all good tools for different things but they're not for focus stacking. And, <clears throat> okay. How do you do your photo stacking in Photoshop? You import all your photos into Photoshop and each photo will be in a separate tab. Um, for uh, mm -hmm. here, okay. What I did here, I have four layers, all right? I And I know there is a way and it's not in the most, the Photoshop CC, you can't do it in Photoshop CC. You could do it in classic where you import your photos in Lightroom and then you can input all those photos into one combined photo in different <laughs> layers. See these layers here that I have outlined? Oh, let me get my pointer. Right here, layer three, two, one, background. And that was just a copy from one tab and I copied, based right. on the original. Right, but if there was a way and um, to, I, yeah, I this is what I did. I'll tell you what I did. I took, <laughs> I opened up four, five, there's one, two, three, four, five images opened up. Each of the image, 96 was the first one. And then I had 97, I'm missing 97. I miss, well, this is not accurate because I'm missing number 97. 
Okay. When I took the images, did this did this um, um, print screen it was after I already done the thing, and I may have missed the photo, right photos. But you want to take the four photos that you're going to use and combine them into one one main photo. So I have the background is would be the the first one, then another another one that I copy and paste it into here, and then another another photo. If I clicked on this. Another picture with image would open up and I would put it in here. So I would have a total of four images that I'm fat stacking for this one photo stacking session. Four images were taken and opened in separate tabs and I copied each file and added them as layers in one file. So you really have to know layering. Who, who doesn't know layering in Photoshop? Yeah. Okay, again, it's a process of learning. And again, the other the other free the other programs, even Helicon and Zerine, I believe, has similar things. Like I said, you can do it in Lightroom easier, but it's not the same. Mm -mm. Okay, you in order to do this, I select an image. I want to copy. I I hit select Control plus J to duplicate a later layer. And if I want to, I copy that layer. Control plus C. Then I open this another image and I want to paste it in that image. I hit control plus P. So that's how I got all these images into one, into one particular image. And this Sandy, is not stacked Sandy, yet. Sandy, just minor yes. correction. To paste what? is control V. Yes, control like P Victor. is paste. Oh, I'm you're no, right. No. Contr you're right. I know, you know, I copied this from someplace. Obviously, that control was Control P is print. Not, right. Not paste. I know. Right. Uh, you know what? I But I copied this from someplace. Oh. Okay. So I will now correct that. Don't correct it. Sorry. There. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like this new toy. All right. <laughs> Red pencil. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. I know it's control V. I've been doing control V for all my like, oh God, for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so the first step is in Photoshop. Okay, so I have my photos, okay, and now I'm going to I want to align them. I have four photos. Now I use a tripod, but a slight movement of your you know, your your camera, you know, a little bit down, a little bit up, just slides a little bit. You're going to have some misalignment, and the and the and the photo stacking will fix that. So you're going to hit um, auto edit. This is the edit button right here. You see the edit button? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it hit opens up auto align layers. Okay, you have to make sure every layer that you want to align is highlighted. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and making sure this Photoshop aligns images to account for any kind of camera movement. So make sure every layer is highlighted. Sandy, then, none, of, none of this is available under Elements. That you uh, I think they probably are, but I had didn't I didn't investigate I, that. I think I remember reading someplace in one of the last things that you could do a lot of the same thing in Elements. Um, then it opens this window and in the, it's, the choices are auto perspective, collage, whatever, but this, it, it defaults to auto and you're going to keep it on auto, but you want to make sure one, two, three, four of your, all your layers are highlighted. Correct. Mm -hmm. So it's automatically going to align all your pictures. Now, once it's aligned, Once it's aligned, another step is, but the what it says, and I didn't have a picture of this, is here you have your four pictures aligned, but there may be like white, some white around the edges of your photo because it's not 100% aligned. So you, you're going to, at some point, you're going to do some cropping later to make sure you get rid of those white lines. If there's a slight misalignment, right, it's going to have a little bit of a white border where it didn't align it. So then you're going to go back down to edit, hit auto blend the layers. Now, here's my mistake. Okay, no, all layers should be highlighted, including the background. I took these pictures after I already did it, and I didn't realize it, you know, I was doing a mock screenshot. 
Mm. And I, I didn't realize I didn't highlight this. You can see the difference between highlighted and non-highlighted, right? Yes. That means this, if I were to do this, you know, from this from this image, I wouldn't have used the, this background image wouldn't have been in, included. Mm -hmm. So I would have missed part of it. And then Photoshop will blend the most focused areas of each image, which is okay. I don't know how it does it, but it knows it and it does it. That is all I care about. Okay, then you're gonna, this is gonna open up and you're going to um, make sure that these things are, let me get my head. You wanna make sure that stack images is selected, which it defaults to, and that this is selected. Is that an edit? This was after the, the, the prior one was edit. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it, the prior one was edit auto align layers. And then once you hit that, this, this screen opens up. Okay. So it's uh, edit, auto align auto blend. Right. And that opens up. So, right. And here again, I didn't, I didn't highlight that, which would have been right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> okay the next step is you need to become one image right you want to um you want to flatten the image so you're going to this is um you're going to select all your images i guess this picture doesn't show it i want to flatten my images i, I should have had another slide before this hold on let me go back I, I missed a Mario slide. Mario Elements does have photo stacking. Okay. Okay, you got to try it. Thank you, Flo. So let me go back to this point. See these images? I would have selected all these, and then I could have right-clicked and said, if I right-clicked on, if I had all these selected, I right-click, and I will get, an, um, click the layers, and I get flatten the image. I want to make all those four layers now that I've aligned go into one flattened image because you're going to wind up with one image at the end. Sandy? Yes. Why would you flatten the image rather than merge layers to above it? Uh, it's I, I use flattened image. Oh, here it is. Yeah, you could have merged the layers. I don't know if it's a big difference. Is there a difference? I could look I don't that know. up. I don't know either. I don't but think I, you have to highlight each each layer either if you just say flatten image it'll automatically right it automatically mm -hmm. does it, take right. every layer and make it one background yeah so when i did this present did these things i what i did was i did all my um editing such as um lighting and everything else um post processing but you can edit each of your images before you even stack them either in photoshop or in lightroom but there are steps that I didn't outline here. It's like, if you have to, if you take one picture and you edit it, you have to copy that edit and you can copy it to the two photo number two, photo number three, photo number four. So every image has the same lighting, you know, has um, any adjustments, texture, clarity, any, any editing can be done before you merge the pictures or after you did them. Most of these were done after, okay? Um, then you may want to crop to get rid of some of those white spots around the edge, or then there may be some blurring around the edges. So you may want to crop your image. Okay. And because it says often the images may be blurry, some, some cropping is needed. And you may want to make adjustments, your exposure, texture, whatever, whatever adjustments you want to make to your photo, you can do after too. There's another example. Okay. Um, what I did was I cropped, saved, and then opened the same photo. Once they were already done in Photoshop, I moved them back to Lightroom to form some more isolated exposure corrections and contrasts. Now I know you can do it on Photoshop. Some of the things I like in Lightroom is that I can, I do radiant, um, radiant, uh, gradient, gradient, and outline my frog and adjust the lighting, the exposure the um, texture and I could do the same separate for the frog, for the bird. So I did that. Um, 
in this for this one to get because I found that the contrast, if you remember back when I said my frog didn't stand out too well from the background. Yeah. So I, I sort of did some adjustments. Uh, <clears throat> one photo in F16 may not be sufficient to get your best depth of field. And then again, you're not gonna use your, this is reiterating, your sharpest aperture, your sweet spot to get the best, um, all, your, uh, all your photo in best focus. What are the disadvantages? Tripod, it may take five times longer or more. You have to take multiple uh, images, adjusting your focal point manually, and you need software to combine them. So this is not for everybody, but it's another tool in your toolbox. You may not use every tool in your toolbox, but when you want to, you'll have it. This is an example of what I did sitting on my, when I was not able to move around before the surgery, I sat on the chair and I did some, I wanted to do some focus stacking. I focused on the cat, bird, the cat with the butterfly. Here I focused on the flag. And what happened was, it's not as sharp from foreground to background. And I did 20 images here. And the problem was, it was wind. And I think this is before I understood everything, you know, I shouldn't have done this in a windy day. So you're going to get wind. It's not going to be as in focus. I used my 105 at F9 at 160th of a second. Again, if I did it, I had done it faster, I may have done, um, taken, mm. accounted for the wind, correct? Right? Maybe, because maybe. Maybe. And there is still some blurring back here. But so, so Sandy, you took 20 images. Right. You took the first one in Photoshop and then you copied the other 19 as 19 separate layers. Right. Above it. Then you went into the edit. You did the the two blend. I, I forgot what it was called. Yeah, auto blend. Yeah, right. Auto blend and then auto stack. But stack auto stack and then auto blend. Yeah. Okay, auto stack first, then auto yeah, blend. I think so. And then you did a flatten image. Yeah. And that's how you came up with the image on the right. Right. Remember, okay. my camera does the ca the images automatic. I set the number of pictures I want, the interval between the pictures. <clears throat> And I just didn't have to click, 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 click. I didn't have to right. do anything. The you camera did. did it you, yeah, it, it it did the focusing for right. you. Where where and with us with most of our cameras, we're going to have to manually adjust the right the, the focus ring one at a time. Right. Okay. Right. Thank okay. you. Um. Okay. This was a stationary object, and I was out my back door. Um. So here I focused on the foreground on the background, and this is 15 images that I focused on. And you can mm. see that, um, and Very this nice. was at uh, uh, F14. And I I did, in my camera, I, I know some cameras allow it, like I can do my, my the camera, I forgot what the, the, stand, the um, size of my actual, the full frame is, but I can do a crop sensor in my camera. I can set it to one-to-one -to -one in my camera before I take the picture. So this was already cropped one-to-one -one before I took the photos. So um, I don't know if it makes a difference with the Photoshop uh, for the photo stacking, but I wanted this, I wanted a one-to-one -one image for this one. Um, let me get to my Zoom, Hold on. my mouse stopped working. Where's my mouse? I, did anybody see my mouse? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. It's in the back room. <laughs> <clears throat> ah, there you are. Um, okay, so okay, so here I focused on the foreground. I could see, you could see you know more of this is in focus here, right? And here, over here, I wanted to zoom yeah. in. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do right, and then here everything from you could see even the the here this the uh, everything in the background isn't as quite as as sharp as this one is. Okay. Okay. Any questions? You're saying the center of one background is sharper than the actual finished image. No, no. the finished image is no, no. This one, this is the focus on the background. This one is uh I focused it here, right? But it this is um did I do this with my 
No, I did this on my phone, my camera, not on my phone. But this is blurred. This isn't photo. This yes. Is no, I was talking about the wall. When I, took the, when I took the photos, what I did was I, I copied, you know, there's like 15 photos. So this is like maybe photo number one. This one maybe is somewhere in the middle. And this is this is when they're all together. Mm -hmm. Not right. This is yeah. the first photo I focused here. This is the right. second photo I may have been here, but this is everything together. It's very mm -hmm. good. And this is the 15, you know, 15 photos in one. And here you can see that I, I can't I can't scroll down, but there were 15 layers in one photo. And then I proceeded with all the steps. But Sandy, your foreground is still blurry. Yes. Um on this one. You're right. Yeah, the rocks. That's, prob yeah. that's probably the well, this one, image. I may it, not have I may not have used the correct image. Like you know, I you didn't use have, this. I didn't, didn't pick Yeah. You this didn't image. merge them. No, yeah. I, I not did. flattened. This is yeah. before they were flattened. Right. Right. And right. before you merged, probably. Right, right, right. Okay, so the one on the far right. Is the fifth not that? Yes, this one. Yes. one. That's yes. the best one. Product. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And this one was just to show you that I had to do all these layers. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, now this is my coffee series. I did one of three photos. I had my camera on a tripod and I had a ring light on this. Uh, I had 105 millimeters at f11. And where my focus initially was on the mm -hmm. uh, front front beans, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can see that comfort, this is not exactly, you know, it's F11, so it's still giving the depth of field, but even Cooper's is not that, you know, is blurred. Um, editing done, let me see, I have to read what I wrote, okay. Oh, I edited all these three photos in Lightroom first. I, I opened my pictures in Lightroom. I did my exposure, my contrast, my texture, clarity, and, and haze, and redu reduction of noise. Then I copied those settings into the next two photos that I used for this three-photo merge. So every photo had the same editing, pre-stacking. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other ones, I edited post-stacking, because I found out about the pre-stacking after I done a lot of research. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is um, number two. I probably focused somewhere around here. I'm not exactly sure, but in the middle ground. And this is focus. Oh, where are you going? Oh, oops, sorry. I went too far. Um, probably. No, I probably focused in here. Okay, somewhere in the background, because obviously this is all not, nothing I would have focused on. But you could even see Cooper's is 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 more is sharper here, and this is a little sharper. I may have done a little different with my my reflection of my ring light, but you know I was doing this for the photo stacking. And then I took yeah. all three three photos combined. You can see how much sharper it is here, oh, right? Terrific. And right here, right. Yeah, great presence. Um, yeah, right. And again, um, after I photo <laughs> I did this. I then put it back. I I imported. I I saved it and I brought it back into Lightroom, and I did some isolated editing on the beans, over here, and here, to get them bring them brought them out more, to get more of this picture, in focus. I got into making drip coffee. Uh, the perfect pour over coffee. So my whole, you know, pre-op two weeks before I was taking pictures of coffee <laughs> and drinking. And I can make it now, now that I'm recovering, I go around the kitchen sidestepping and I make my coffee. Okay. And I Sandy, got rid of Sandy, my pouring. Yes. Earlier on, we mentioned of going for depth of field, not right. necessarily front to back, but also to the sides. You right. may have just uh, taken a couple shots focusing on the Cooper and maybe focusing on the Comfort. So right. you're getting them all sharp. So it's not all straight forward and back, some right. to the side as well. Yes, exactly. I don't remember where I focused. I really don't because, but it you could even see in the the the, the um, flower, the, the jade plant in the background is not too bad. Hmm. Um, but this is right. This is the one I meant is that I did a wider angle. Again, this is with my 105. Also, um, fixed lens. So, uh, you know, 
and look how nice my lady is, how sharp she is, and all the dust on the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you want to clean your scale before you take these photos, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> <laughs> but the Helicon software is reasonable, reasonably priced. It's free yet robust. I'm getting this from the site. I didn't do it. Easy to work with and has many advanced controls um, for you to, to use and had good reviews. The prices were pretty good for a one-year license. Depends on what you want to do. You'd have to look up uh, from twenty-four to fifty-two dollars for the year. What do you mean it's free? It's not free. And not free. <laughs> reasonably, reasonably priced. Free yet? Oh uh, no, you're right. It's not right. <laughs> I, I got to change that. Sorry. Let's see. We, I, I, you're right. So who's who? Correct, just corrected me. Ed. Ed. Get Thank that you, red Ed. pen. Get the red pencil. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so Sandy, do you oh. think do you think uh, Helicon and the other uh, uh, second party software ha are better or have any advantage over Photoshop? I can't answer that. I know when I read about focus stacking that those these three were were mentioned as being good in the field. So yeah. I guess if you don't want, I know they have other um, traits, but I wanted to give people options. You know, yeah. I mean, I know whatever. Helicon's been around a long time, and that's that's what they're dedicated to. So. Oh, you know about? Oh, I I never heard of you know. Again, if you've been in the field, you'll know more than I. So yeah. you know, um, let me get my point directions. Okay, so Photoshop is ex Express is free and has it's limited. It's photo stacking, but not really. Um, but uh, photo stacking, but they're rather free. I'm not going to go into them, but these are other. I know people have talked about what are free options for um, editing. So here are some free options. Not to talk about it, it has nothing to do with focus stacking, but I just listed them. And Photoshopping, besides doing the photo merge, up to five photos, is not as precise, it doesn't correct for alignment, and rec still recommend the use of a tripod, and it has a pretty easy learning curve. I just opened it, Photoshop Express recently changed, and what I found out is you can't open your picture and get that screen that I, I said with the read all those things to you, you, you have to first open the Photoshop Express, then open your photos and then add them. Um, but that's, I think it was maybe in the last three, two, three months that they had changed Photoshop, maybe yes. even less Photoshop Express, they updated yes. it. Um, and I found that, you know, again, I play with a computer, I play with everything and I, I learned it before I read it. And I, I thought it was an easy learning curve. Um, I thought you said, the Photoshop Express Press. was only for your iPhone, for your phone. No, I, it's for your phone, yes. Oh. Or your, your phone or your, uh, I, I, but but I do believe I read somewhere that you can do it on, get the app on your computer, but I have to. <clears throat> and Andy, I'm just taking a look at on my phone and it says that Photoshop Express is an in-app purchase. So it's not free. Oh. You would have an in-app purchase. I don't know yeah. what phone. What camera do you have? What phone do you have? The 13 Pro. No, it's free. Mine was free. No, it's free. I'm pretty sure mine on the Android. It's free. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. It's free. Yeah. Um, <laughs> other tools for Photoshop, and again, Photoshop has Express has other things you can then edit and do so many things. And and there's so many. I've done. I've actually put photos in competitions with um, uh, editing in Photoshop Express. So. It says Photoshop editor and oh, it just says Photoshop app free. No, no, because just Photoshop, you can get a Photoshop app, which is the same as your Photoshop on your computer, using it on your uh, phone or your iPad. But it, you still have to have Photoshop, the, the license for Photoshop. You have to have Photoshop Express. It's yeah, different. because here okay. it is, it's yeah. free on the Android. Yeah, right? it's free. Yeah, Photoshop Express. And, and again, Photoshop Express has other advantages. So we're just almost finished, I believe. Photo stacking summary, that means it's finished. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. okay. Are you Your happy? pros. <laughs> Your pros for huge prints. Avoid doing a lot of uh, avoid doing a lot of post uh, image cropping. You get complex landscapes with a larger depth of field. You get the sharpest in, in images from a macro and uh, macro image. Uh, again, the comments from the judges, whether or not that means anything to you, but if you really want to impress the judge, do photo stack. 
um, can be done with cameras with built-in modes or done automatically. So it's not, you don't always need to do it with your automatic modes and you can do it with your smartphones. And I pointed out the advantages and dis disadvantages. What are your cons? We've talked about them. You need to process it post-processing. Mm -hmm. Most cost money, um, some are not as expensive. Uh, it takes more time to set up, take photos and to edit. So you're not gonna be going on a photo trip with a tour and they give you a 15 minute we're getting off the bus to see the uh, the um, you know the mountains, and you have fifteen minutes, and there are twenty thousand people there. You're not going to do it, obviously, there. But if you're going on a photo journey, that may be something you want to do. Uh, use a tripod, and not good for moving ab objects, animals, wind, or waves. And it, there is a definite learning curve, as any photography will tell you. So, does anybody have more questions? or a slide that they would like to go back to. I I missed, I my battery went dead and I had to plug in around the point where you're doing Photoshop, but, but basically you don't need it. If you have Photoshop, you don't need any additional software. You no. can do it with that technique that you showed. Yes. Okay. Yes. And perhaps with elements, it might work also. I think Flo said, yes, it does. I, okay. it I Googled it, it does. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how it works. I'm going to figure Right. It's okay. probably very similar. Um, you know, it sounds, know, from what I could see in Google, it does sound very similar. Okay. Anybody else have any? Uh, Sandy, it occurred to me maybe in the warmer weather, we could go out and do yeah. that yeah. kind yeah. of shooting. Would they go? We can go to, you know, to the pond. We can go to meet at Plainsboro because there's so many areas there with you yeah. have so many great maybe scenes we over there. Put that on our, uh, maybe yeah, the walking to do right when we were looking for a date. Yeah, but I mean, I want to try it too. I mean, just go in your backyard and you know go out and take go not just where your uh, landscape is, but go in the center between the housing, sit stand to your left or to your right, take a picture of the tree and everything else behind it and see how far, how good your photo, you know, how good your photo stacking will, you know, do for you to practice or set up. And a lot of the examples I saw were using small, like I had my little bird and all that, using small toys. And like, if you want, like if people, they have their little trains and the little people and to get the best photos, the most in, the best depth of field in focus, they use photo stacking. See, and, I, I, you know, maybe I missed it, but the point, the once you put it in whatever program you're using to combine them, you have to tell, in other words, you don't give the program all 15 pictures and say, find the best one. No, no, you do. You don't, you, whatever pictures you took, if you're doing them manually, you, if you're doing it manually, you're going to take the pictures where you feel you go, you what you want one to 15 or one to 50 and you put those in into your not you don't skip around you just take you start your you start your photo shoot and you stop at whatever point you want and then you combine all those photos oh so you combine all 50 the 50 you to the yes. computer the computer will combine all 15 and pick the best of the photoshop doesn't pick it. It takes the best part of that particular photo. If you're using when you do the stacking in in Photoshop, it says what it says was it actually that 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 technique whatever it does and it takes time. If you have three photos, it's going to take a shorter time. If you have fifteen photos, I noticed that little thing that goes you know, the scroll taking button. The photos. If you're giving the computer all the photos, yes, you could take two or three of the foreground. No, you would take, you would take, you, when you set up your photo shoot, take as many pictures that you plan to put it into Photoshop. That's my impression. Don't, you start with, you start, I don't go like, I want to take three pictures of the foreground and then four pictures of the same middle ground. You know, you're going to take one picture of your foreground, then go to the middle ground, then go past that. And then you're, you're not taking five or six photos of the same focal point. Well, what what happens if your first shot is is not tack sharp? Well, then you practice getting that tack sharp. That's why you use, and then you could start where you 
take a photo of your, you know, put your hand in that we're starting here and the next picture is the one that you're starting from. I did that a few times. Oh, that didn't look right. So I'll start again. Mm. Yeah. Right. And you want to make sure, of course, any, any picture flow, you know that if you're not, if you're adjusting your, <coughs> um, your, your, um, uh, focus. Right. Yes. Thank you. It's after nine o'clock. I, I stopped that. thinking. But yes. <laughs> going back to one of your, uh, your, your, your examples, the picture of the bird was never sharp. I know, but that was my error. I mean, I would have done that again. Oh, I would have done the whole series again. Right. I would have, and, and yeah. each, but but when do you check? To, I mean, you didn't check to see whether that first shot was uh, was not proper. Okay, you take your shots. I'd say, I, I mean, in that one, you know, maybe I'm doing three shots, you know, and I say, okay, uh, mm, I'm not happy with these. You know, I, I didn't do something right, obviously you want to start again you know this is what photography is it's not like you know you, if you're going to do 50 yeah right, you're going right. to have to be pretty right. tact you want to be pretty sure that you're getting the best focus well right but if you, you know, use your camera to take all the shots if your camera has that feature yes in other words you would if before you put it in in the computer to be photo stacked you would check to see you would have to check each picture that the camera took to see if it's yeah. well. But then, yeah, that makes sense. Well, say you took a photo of the foreground, the first thing in the bird, and I said, "Oh, I took three at the same the same folk." My my focus was on the eye, but I didn't focus it quite enough, so I would eliminate two and leave the third one. Is that what you're saying? I'm taking a picture of the bird's eye. I focus. I take three pictures identical. You don't do that. You said you give. Well, you could do it, but it take it'll take you more time. Obviously, if you're doing a lot of shots, every if you're changing the, the focal point and then you're taking spot more than one shot at that focal point, you're gonna you it's gonna take more time. You can do whatever you want. It's your camera, your 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 art your artistry. Okay, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm logging off. Oh. Thank you very much, Sandy. You're welcome. Does any right. my did my explaining it that you get not understanding? Flo, um, maybe I can help you a little bit. You can take as many pictures as you want, right? But you only enter into the program the ones that you wanted to work on. Right. That's what I asked. But she yes, well, I, I did. I That's did why say I that answered that for you. Yeah, yeah. It was more direct. So Thank can, you, Rich. So you yes. can pick the best of whatever you took yes. and right. put those in. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Yes. I apologize. I, I, I didn't explain myself well. Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you. you, Rich, for being my mouth. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Andy, I okay. Have to thank you. This nope. was so great. It, I, I don't know. Are you, you're not finished? No, I am finished. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I am wildly impressed that you could get all of the computer to do what you wanted it to do. <laughs> and you were about as thorough as you could possibly be. Well, thank you, thank you. That was Andy, this you. was a real excellent presentation. You said a high bar, nice Andy. Okay. Thanks, Andy. All right, let's be, the check is in the mail for the compliments. Uh, thank uh, you. Uh, no, thank Andy. you. <laughs> thank you, Andy. Andy. Feel Andy. good. You get Andy to keep your excellent. job. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. You have to work. You have to work. I was, I was so nervous this afternoon because I'm on the computer. My eye wasn't focusing and I was trying to do two. I said, this is not working. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know. Somehow my eye seems better tonight. Okay. Maybe I don't have as much flair. What were you saying, Mario? I'm saying uh, uh, send me your updated PowerPoint. Yeah. And uh, when Mark gets the video on or even under the workshop section of the website, I'll put the new, I'll put your updated PowerPoint on there. All right. It was a, a great presentation. And it's so nice That's for great. us cheap Photoshop Elements users to perhaps have something that we can use for. <laughs> yeah, that we That's can right. Yeah. Okay, good. I just All downloaded right. it on my phone, so I'm very happy. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very Say the name of your camera if you want. Okay, yeah. thank you. Right. See you around. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.